Hello, everybody. It's Lenny Murphy of Green Book Blog, and here with a very special guest, um, uh, Owen Hanks from Measure Protocol, the winner of the most recent Insight Innovation Competition uh, at IAX North America in Atlanta just a few weeks ago. Owen, welcome. Thank you, Lenny. Really nice to be here, and thank you for the award. Uh, well, you know, I, I didn't personally do it, but uh, I'm glad I facilitated in some small way of you earning it, uh, because you darn sure did. Um, so let me actually put this in perspective for those who weren't there. You know, normally the competition is with six candidates for a variety of reasons. This year it was 12. So, uh, so you beat out a whole bunch of folks. Uh, first, just to get into the short list, because there were, what, 30, I think, in the uh, entrance yeah. in the competition. Um, uh, 12 on stage, and unequivocally, uh, from a score standpoint, from our independent panel of judges, kicked everybody's butt. Um, so you earned every single bit of that. Uh, now, what was also interesting uh, is that uh, Measure Protocol is a blockchain play. And there were three other blockchain plays uh, actively in the competition uh, on stage. So not only did you beat out 12 competitors in general, or in terms of you know, other, other startups, uh, but you, you beat out several direct competitors that are developing uh, other blockchain protocols. So you earned it, man. You earned it, absolutely. Thank you, Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. So that's probably a good segue because I, I expect a lot of our uh, a lot of our listeners are going, ah, blockchain, what? Uh, so what exactly right. is that? What, what, what does Bitcoin have to do with research? Uh, so, uh, so let's dive right into it. Tell us the measure story. Uh, you know, how did you get here? Uh, what is your play, and uh, where do you see things going? Uh, yeah, so it's um, it's been a um, it's the the measure protocol story in its actual entirety is uh, from the start of this year, 2018, but with a with uh, a good number of hours, just not under a brand uh, prior to that, um, where myself and my co-founders were doing the normal thing that startups do is trying to work out how all of the functional pieces go together. Um, so it's probably been just under a year in total. Um, so uh, I'm the co-founder, nominally the CEO, um, and I have uh, three, um, two other co-founders uh, and a founding in, uh, employee as well. Um, we, we know actually each other. We'd all worked together um, at an, a media and ad tech business um, a few years back um, where we were all the acquirees. So all of us have actually sold previous businesses before um, in different shapes and forms. One was a research, a river sample company. Um, one was a um, an ad tech business. One was a mobile video business. So, um, and we all eventually ended up in the same um, home. Um, and we actually took that business to be IPO'd on the New York Stock Exchange. So we had a pretty good time, um, and we got to see a whole bunch of things um, through those journeys. So we've we've been startup guys for some considerable period of time, and. Um, and I'll give a shout out to those folks now. So they're um, John Martin, who's the CTO, uh, Paul Neto, who um, has um, recently joined us from Cantal, who is our chief marketing officer, and Prashant Ravindran, who is our chief data scientist. And they're the, they're the four, and we've now extended that team. So um, apologies for the rest of the team, but you know, for, for the for the purposes of you know not doing that kind of Oscar ceremony thing, um, that's the that's what we look like. Um, but um, but yeah, we're we're growing that pretty uh, pretty swiftly now. So we we started talking about this. So um, I um, I came at, at the blockchain technology um, a little bit by accident, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, uh, was asked to look at some companies in terms of um, to advise. Um, I don't profess to be a technologist. Um, that's definitely uh, John and, and Prashant's bag. Um, but I. Have have I've been fortunate enough to build a number of businesses in the past um, successfully, and so I was asked from a commercial business perspective to help some tech guys, and I ended up not really helping them very much because I got so intrigued with what the blockchain was and what its benefits could be, and across a whole bunch of different um, uh, industries that I, I ended up um, going down what we often describe as a, a, a very dark rabbit or rat hole um, in learning. Um, and this was just about a year ago. Um, so, in a in a nutshell, that's that, that's us as a team and how we came together. But um, and then what we 
actually do, and I'll, I'll try and back that into what your know, first question, which is what is the blockchain, but what do measure do? Well, um, the, we're, we're building a protocol that allows, uh, we think, um, the simplest mechanic of um, research buyer um, and respondent to be able to connect through technology, um, through a protocol that um, allows for um, a fair value exchange for a consumer's time and input. Um, and for those people at IIX, then one of the things that people would have seen me do was talk about this um, this five dollars and forty cents. And and I and I do it as a it's not a it's not a trick or a, but it's actually it's it's from our own um, realization that actually when a researcher has let's just say it's five dollars and I only and it could be three dollars so make up your own number it has an amount of money um, to pay for a standard 15 minute survey for a respondent FMCG automotive financial whatever that might be um, for a set of pretty standard questions that the the five dollars turns into a 40 cents payout to the respondent that five dollars somehow from the re the hand of the researcher it, get, i'm elaborating but to make the point to get to the consumer gets there in the terms of 40 cents but actually it's not 40 cents it, it's as we know it's it's points or awards or coupons or vouchers so it's virtual it's virtual currency in, in many respects um and we started to think if there were ways that um that the blockchain because we we live and breathe i've been a research a buyer of research and my my uh, co-founders have been in the research industry for you know 20 plus years how how could we start to to use that to answer some of the big questions that we we know that we always hear from the you know from conferences uh, which are there's declining participation in research there's professional survey takers that you know become the bane of everyone's life there's lack of transparency and, and we add the last one, which is kind of long, poorly formatted surveys that go on forever, don't fit the mobile phone, et cetera, et cetera. So all of those are the standard things. Um, and we started to think, if what if we, rather than, you know, have $5 and turn that into 40 cents as a generic, what if we could actually go back to the old, kind of old-fashioned way before online panels and online research, you know, started to have to have more and more of these mechanics that eventually crunched the 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 value in the middle. What if we could actually take the $5 and pay that to the respondent for their time? Um, and, uh, and that seems would seem like a wonderful thing to be able to do, but yet how can any company do that without taking a margin now of the business? But you know, that's why, that's why we have panel companies, that's why we have survey engines and who all do a great job for the industry. But how do we do that? Um, and, and it wasn't until I discovered the blockchain just over a year ago, the technology of blockchain, when I realized that actually there may be an ability to do that, to actually have as many, to prove out as many of the benefits, but actually to be able to transfer value from one place to another without a margin, without, without, and, and I, I think every industry, whether it's market research, whether it's the ad industry, all of, every industry has middlemen. Now, I think some of the notions around blockchain is that middlemen are bad and there should be a way to cut them out. That's not how we view the world. We view that if there's a way to make that uh, a fair ecosystem then everyone gets to participate then that's actually one of the reasons why we're building a protocol so if you think about that five dollars from the researcher getting to the respondent what would you have to do well it would mean that you'd have to build a bunch of functionality that um, was automated that sits in the middle um, to be able to do that but primarily that company would need to make money some other way it would need to be and and that's where blockchain and cryptocurrencies actually benefit enormously because um, and this is the really tough part to kind of get your head around if you think about the internet and the fact that everyone who does a job on the internet right now has gets paid a fee to do that, whether it's a SaaS based model, whether it's a, you know, a, a project based model. But the cryptocurrency model is not that. Um, it's actually that you can do many things on the blockchain. And if you build a cryptocurrency, in our case, that's called a measure token, um, that that you can ask one party to um, transition something to another party and not take any margin from that. And our company relies on the um, incremental value of the ecosystem to make our money. So if there was ever a B2B 
business or set of technologies that provided the merits, you could build a business on the true merits, then the blockchain does that, not just for market research, but for almost uh, for a, a million, you know, a myriad of other business uh, in, or, or verticals, you know, from supply chain to ad technology, et cetera, et cetera, provenance, you know, all, all of these things are, um, are being looked at by blockchain technology companies. And, um, and we, uh, in, the, in the research perspective, what we started to see is that if we could do that, could we answer some of the additional qualities that the blockchain brings? So I just talked about cryptocurrencies and that ability to build a, an economy through having a token. But one of the beauties that came out of cryptocurrencies was the blockchain, that technology that underpins it. And what, what that actually is, is a ledger. And um, I, I know that Lenny, you and I have spoken about this in the past, but um, it really is a, just the, one of the world's largest spreadsheets or world's largest ledgers. But everything that gets put on that is immutable. It stays on that and it's transparent and it's um, private and transparent. And, um, and parties that want to check if something happened on that ledger from either side of a transaction can, can always check on that. And, and the way that that serves us in the research and in this mechanic is that when a researcher says, I want 25 to 44 year olds who drive a BMW car from Denmark, I don't know why I picked Denmark, but I did. But uh, um, then, and if you're the respondent and you are a 25 to 44 year old who drives a BMW and you live in Copenhagen, then those two pieces of information, it, at least encrypted, sit there forever um and that means that you have these just these wonderful um uh additional benefits not just from a, a monetary exchange but, but these additional benefits that actually can benefit businesses make them transparent no more black boxes everyone has to do everything out in the open um and when you think about that from our industry it it starts to you start to think about how that can truly benefit um, could it can it can it increase quality of sample? Do we get to start to reduce the need for professional survey takers? Does it allow um, the the mechanics of being paid more? This is a this is an open question. I don't necessarily have the answer, but if, if we can increase the value that we pay to the respondent, do we get better quality? Do we actually get a broader mix of respondents? Um, I know that people will debate me on that. You know, there's been lots of studies been done about you know how much you pay the respondent, but but. Theoretically, if you can think about those things, most of them have are, are to the betterment of the research industry rather than just lining the pockets of measure or one party or other. Is that actually we get to have a? Um, this is where I, I I stop being a capitalist and I start to become very much a worthy person. But actually, we start to potentially increase the value for people who are using this as some sort of secondary income, uh, which is understanding how you know what their value of their data is. Um, and it also means that from the market research industry, we get to do this um, for the merits of doing good work, uh, which is what our clients always ask us to do over and over and over again. So um, that's probably a sort of a long way round, but um, we, we, we use technology to build um, businesses, to, to build the, the ability for that money to be transferred um, without uh, any um, ability to take a margin from it. And we also do that with a whole bunch of other nice benefits, transparency, privacy. Um, the, the, the one of the other pieces, and, and I talk about the, the name and that we're building a protocol, is that we actually intend um, to, to make these services open. So that means that other people in the industry can use this underlying code and software based to actually think about how to communicate with their audiences or with their consumers uh, and using um, s some of the protocol that just has all of this these fundamental benefits built in um, uh, and, and that all becomes open you know the minute that we launch that technology it becomes it's out there in the wild and, uh, and people get to utilize it because we don't own the brain mass of the whole market research industry and we'd, we'd love for other people to think of better solutions than than we have in the first place um so, that's probably that's probably enough of my voice for a while no no that's the, that was great and the uh uh and uh you're a very effective evangelist so um 
and preach to the choir. I think, uh, yeah, I've been, you and I did speak uh, a few months ago and, and uh, obviously this, this general idea is one that's been in my head for a long time as well. Um, and, and thinking of where those pieces fit, right, between the, the personal data economy and the universal basic income and uh, right. the issues around, you know, the, the research industry in terms of quality and respond engagement and value proposition and yada, yada. And so and totally agree. Uh, blockchain just seems to make sense as the application to be able, the, the inline technology to bring those pieces together. And, uh, and, and you've done it. Um, and, you know, I've said uh, it, to you, and I think I've even said it publicly, but I'll say it again. I, I personally believe um, that this is the next great uh, pivot point, not just for the research industry, but for technology as a whole, um, uh, for our digital lives, uh, is establishing, you know, not just the the, in, the underlying architecture and infrastructure to store and house the data and do that in a transparent way, but to empower different type of economic systems. Um, right. Uh, you know, marketplaces and monetization opportunities uh, owned by the individual versus right. the middleman, right? I think this is the great democratization of data um, uh, as an asset. Um, uh, or, uh, yeah, I've thought about it. I think if you see my my bookshelf, I got lots of comics here, and because I, I, you know, collect comics, and I thought, you know, it'd be really cool to put all that on the blockchain, right? And you know, just to create an exchange, uh, wow. yeah, and anything of that nature. Uh, yeah, I think that that's that's where we are. Um, uh, once all the dreck of the the early scam cryptocurrencies get out of the system, right. and I think we're close to that, um, then we start moving into the maturity uh, where there's real pragmatic business applications being built. They are being built. Um, lots of big companies are investing money. This is more for our listeners. I know you know this, but uh, you know, World Bank, IBM, um, uh, City, you know, they have significant investments. Um, uh, in both the technology and in the applications of blockchain technology, this is not you know fly by night you know Bitcoin crap anymore that sits in the the uh, you know the terrorists and drug dealers use right that that this is right. we've moved past that and you're part of that whole movement of of you know real pragmatic business applications. So anyway, now I'll I'll hush for a second and ask you a question. So now thinking about the research ecosystem. Right. Yeah. The, it would be easy to, to look and say, oh, so you're going to be another sample provider. And I think that is it would be a gross generalization and, and probably a misstatement. So how do you see yourself fitting? So we've got sample providers, you know, uh, technology companies, consultancies yeah. and clients. Right. Um, wh where do you fit there? What's the value proposition for any or, or a few of those? Oh, uh, no worries. <laughs> I, you, you didn't lose me. Uh, no, I no. I'm just trying to shut the other noise down. No uh, worries. No worries. Uh, it happens. Hey, we're lucky that one of my kids or the dog hasn't walked in. So the. Uh, <laughs> um, but I. So your. But your question is a. Um, so the, is a is a good one actually. Um, because I think actually the um the 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 fact that many of the companies right now. Um, who talk about blockchain, talk about it just from a one, one standard point of view, which is that this is, um, this is going to um, be uh, just completely um, disruptive. And, and I think it will be disruptive. That it's a new technology that has the ability to do that, but it doesn't have to always, it doesn't have to completely remove the existing ecosystem, um, at, at, which is sometimes how this is being pervaded, is that it just completely takes out the middleman or the intermediary. And, and and yes, it could do that, but it doesn't have to if it isn't architected that way. And I'll try and, so as, as, the, as our ecosystem sits at this moment in time where you've got um, client, um, research, you know, um, as in the project owner of the research it, itself, you've got survey uh, panels, you've got um, the technology survey engines, etc. Um, I think the the one thing that we think about is actually um, uh, evangelizing what the blockchain can do to clients, the brands, um, to so that when they actually talk to their 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 research partner of choice, whomever that might be, um, is that they that the clients actually start to understand um, what some of the opportunities are. And we um, and I always forget this number, so I apologise. But there's the, the the there's the when a 
when a client or researcher cho chooses a panel, there's the ESMR 20, and I forget how many numbers there are in that, that list of how to choose your panel, but um, we think about this as a as the next evolution of that. Could it be that the ASMR list gets, you know, in terms of how you choose that, gets a few more things added to it, or it has a blockchain set of credentials? So we think about it from that perspective. So that's just educating or evangelizing to um, clients. But we also think about that as education and evangelizing to the research companies as well. So who who might be one of our first sets of clients. Um, uh, and and we think about that because, yes, we 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 are building an application of our own on top of the block of, on top of the protocol. And we really do that to show people how to use it and how it can be used. And, and that to the, you know, to, um, to anyone who sits in this world could look pretty simply like a panel. Um, now the, the reality is, is that for us, it doesn't necessarily mean to be the be all and end all of what measure does, but actually it, it will serve as a process to say, look, this is how you can use some of this piece of blockchain technology. And we've built that in a protocol so that if you are a panel company, hey, you can actually build a version of this or that is your own um, that you, or that you can partner with this application that sits there. Um, and we will uh, and actually already are talking to many of the technologies that sit in the research world to say, hey, you can plug into this this thing and then you get all of the benefits that you that you currently have from your existing business. But you get the benefits of having some of those other niceties that just come almost by default from the measure protocol because we use the blockchain, which are the transparency, the privacy. Uh, and when I talk and, and reputation scores, which I think is a big part of what the blockchain, um, I, I was with someone only yesterday um, and they, they'll have to remain nameless uh, just because I don't want to embarrass them, but, uh, but the, um, who work for a very large research firm, um, one of the largest. And they said, um, reputation, great. So we get, to, we get to score the respondents. And I said, yeah, you do. But they get to score, score you. Score you too. <laughs> uh, and, and then it's the person I was speaking to did a sharp intake of breath, and then and then said, "You mean like an Uber drive, like an Uber service?" And I said, Ex "That's exactly the way to think about this. Is that actually we all want a good Uber score so that the driver turns up when they're supposed to, but." And we also have to be good people, right? So that that we get a driver and they score us as well. And and that that piece becomes hugely valuable. So so and we ex we can then explain to you know other technology companies how they can use their engine, but take some of these other niceties that the blockchain and that we our protocol provides. So um, I think we have. You know, it's hard to say at this moment in time that we actually can work with everybody in the in the ecosystem but i think there is and maybe that's just because you know we're a small startup and we don't have as you know everything takes brain power from the the six or seven individuals that work here right now so um that means that there may be just we just haven't thought of every um you know iteration of how this can and and we'd love to talk to other people about how that can how they think you know they might want to connect to this to to support their businesses that they have and to extend them now you know having worked for a, a public company not that long ago is that not the 90 day pressure of the earnings call is painful and um having some abilities to accelerate your business strategy um over those 90 days is sometimes a relief so if we can help someone with that i've seen that pain before and I, you know, we'd happily try and help others with that pain too. So, um, but I think it, so we can fit with all of those parts. Is is the truth? I think the likelihood is that we would probably be mostly seen as a competitor to sample companies, but that doesn't. I, I think that that's probably a little short-sighted um, for the future of how this protocol plays out. If I'm honest. Yeah, sure, no, that makes sense. Yes, yeah, so I want to be conscious of time because uh, I think you and I could go on for a very long yeah, time yeah. Uh, right. talking about this, but. Uh, and I think that we will have more opportunities to talk about it. So just for those who are listening, you know, one, one of the benefits of winning was obviously this conversation, et cetera, et cetera. But like every company that has won the competition, you know, Remash, Sappy, uh, et cetera, et cetera, you're now in our orbit. You're stuck. You can't escape. Um, so you will be speaking at multiple IEX events over the course of the next year or so. Um, uh, you know, we'll be talking about this and this topic in general. Um, of blockchain is certainly going to be a topic that we're going to be paying a lot of attention to because I think it's important. Um, 
Uh, so uh, one kind of detailed question, and, and we've hinted at it, and it's been something that I've heard a lot of folks mention, um, that uh, in the world of GDPR, yeah. the immutable record uh, seems to not be GDPR compliant. Now, I have, I personally have talked to, to other folks that are playing in blockchain uh, that have said that is not true, um, that it can be GDPR compliant. Um, uh, tell me from your perspective. So, and you're in the UK, so. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. I've been, I've been, unfortunately, uh, GDPR is, uh, so I think anyone who works in market research and advertising has actually been dealing with GDPR for longer than anyone else in any other industry. Uh, because we've known well, about it. they should have been. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Right. three or four years. So it's sort of yeah. a day doesn't go by. But the um, so I think there's a couple of things to think about here, um, and not all of them are are resolved at this moment in time. So um, I think the first thing to say is that um, not everything that can go on the blockchain should go on the blockchain. Um, we believe in a decentralized um, ability for what we what's described as consensus i e someone not owning the keys to that so the each decision but that doesn't necessarily mean that that everything has to 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 do to do that um and the transaction not necessarily the data Is correct you're kind of going yep, got correct. It. Okay. yeah so um so there are parts of data that we that will sit on the blockchain and, and, and the easiest way to describe this is that the blockchain can be mined or accessed anywhere around the world and some of that data might sit on a computer which is in Korea or Argentina or wherever else it might be in the world and and as everyone who listens to this will know GDPR is within the walls of, of the European community at this moment in time so the minute that I go outside of that there are some exceptions to that, but they're probably a little bit more detailed to go into than on this. That actually, there are some permissions that do allow that to happen. But for the for the ease of the information, it has to sit in the the the, the European Union, and therefore, if if something's being mined in South Korea, it fails the GDPR test. So um, now that means that you just have to make sure that what's being mined is not one of the five main criteria of GDPR, right? <laughs> it's not my PII data um, and it's not my immutable ability to, to be forgotten, right? So you have to think about how you use the blockchain to make some of the transactions and some of the things to be stored there, which are beneficial for both parties. But that, that actually, if you think about, you know, th this one is a slightly, I, I don't want to, uh, you know, um, the, the, the statement I'm just about to make is, is not completely 100% fact, but the um, if you think about the way that we use market research to the betterment of our clients, it's not me or Lenny, it's actually about what an individual that looks a bit like us and feels a bit like us that might do, at, hopefully at some scale, to be able to answer a question, and therefore some of those things don't need to always sit on the blockchain, um, because actually the might some of my information might well be well served for that client even if it doesn't get necessarily in that moment attached to me at that moment in time if I put it there in the first place so being able to disintermediate oh sorry being able to separate some of those things to what goes on the chain and what doesn't and how you talk to the blockchain itself is really important and I there, there are some some other pieces um, that are being worked on, not by us, but we we absolutely look to partner with other protocols and other blockchain technologies um, that are are also trying to solve some of the identity issues that exist not just in our industry but in actually others. In fact, the banking industry has possibly the big one of the sure. biggest. Issues. Um, so so we're we're working with uh, some other pieces because I I see a future where. Um, there's KYC and which is know your customer and, and AML which is the anti money laundering uh, rights which are mostly used in banking and, uh, and and where actually they could be hugely beneficial for market research. Knowing our customers is actually something that we used to know when we stop people face to face in the high street and you know right. ask them some questions that we kind of lost along the way. So um, so yeah, we're trying to work with other people, but it but it doesn't always have to sit on the blockchain. That's, I guess, that's the easiest answer. Not everything that's a, that, um, so it can be GDPR compliant, but that's because you don't necessarily use the chain for every single part of the transaction. Yeah, all right, that is, uh, that is, is interesting. Um, and it made a few lights go off in my head that we'll, we can talk about uh, sure. privately, since you're still a startup and you're still IP, right? Yeah. Um, to, uh, to protect. Yeah. Um, 
Oh, and this has been great. Uh, this will be the first of many conversations. Um, and, uh, and I think that you'll be uh, certainly a pivotal player in the evolution of uh, this next, next great transformation of the industry over the next few years. So uh, congratulations again on the win. You're in for, for a hell of a ride. Um, okay. And uh, uh, well, I will bring you back at some point for an update to kind of let us know how things are going. Uh, until then, you know, thank you for the time and best of luck. Thank you very much, and then thank you to the, the, the audience and to the judges on that day as well, and we hope to serve as well as your past winners have as well, so um, we, um, we're, we're really appreciative. Thanks very much on behalf of me and the rest of the team. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Cheers now. Yeah, cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.